Happy New Year, everybody, from everyone here at Park Ridge Presbyterian Church. My name is Amanda. I'm one of the pastors here. I lead our teams for family ministry and for missions, and I'm so glad to welcome you to our online worship service. I know most of you are praying for more good days than hard days in this new year, and we're right there with you. But the good news is that our church is, is here for the good days and the bad days. We hope that everything that we do here at Park Ridge Presbyterian Church helps your faith make a difference for you. We believe faith can make a difference, sometimes especially on those hard days. So whether you are visiting us for the first time online, whether you're still getting to know us, we're really glad that you're here and we want to help you get better connected. So there's a couple things you can do. You can head to our website, parkridgepresby.org slash getconnected and fill out the I'm new here form. You tell us a little bit about who you are and the kinds of ministries that you're looking for and someone from our team will get in touch with you about how we think they might make a difference. You can stay connected with us on social media. We're at Park Ridge Presby on Instagram and Facebook and you can subscribe to this YouTube channel. You can get all of our weekly services. Today's service includes a message from Pastor Josh, music from our band and a time for prayer. Like I said, we hope this service and everything that we do helps your faith make a difference for you. And one of the ways that we can see that faith is making a difference for people is by how people decide to spend their time and, and some of their skills and their gifts and their financial resources with our church community. Our community is full of generous and faithful people who, who share what God has given them all the time. Maybe this year, maybe this new year is a time for you to take a next step. Maybe you're ready to take a step and serve in your community. You can visit our website, parkridgepresby.org serve to learn more about how our church can help you serve in your local community. You know, or maybe you've been a faithful volunteer for a long time, but, but you're ready to take a next step in financial giving and take that next step of faith. We would love to talk to you about that, and you can learn more about giving by going to our website, parkridgepresby.org slash giving. And the easiest way to give, Zell has made it so easy, you can use the email address giving at parkridgepresby.org to give online using Zell. So we hope you enjoy this service, and we hope that it helps your faith make a difference for you. Let's continue to worship God together. Well, there's always more to the story. There's the story that we tell about what we think happened, and there's the story about how we remember things happening, and then there's the rest of the story that people like to tell as well. Now, you might have someone in your life who likes to tell stories, and they tell a part of a story at one point, and then they tell the rest of it at another point, or maybe sometimes they tell the whole thing at once. And believe it or not, the Christmas story is a little bit like that as well. 
There's the part of the story that we love to tell and the part that we remember. And then there's parts of the story that we kind of add on to or we think perhaps maybe happened all at once. Or we have an image of the Christmas experience for Mary and Joseph in particular where there's a whole lot more people there than there actually were. Well, when we unpack what is told to us and what we read about the story of Jesus in the scriptures and the story of his birth, we actually know that there's more to the story, that there's the rest of the story. And when we explore better what's going on in this part of the scriptures, we get a better sense of who God is and what God was doing through Jesus. Now, last week we took a look at more of the story, the rest of the story in the Gospel of Luke and how Jesus and his family went to visit the temple and they they met this guy named Simeon and this prophet named Anna and had a whole experience about learning who Jesus was going to be and who they thought he was going to be and who he actually became were probably a little different. Well, the rest of the story, according to the Gospel of Matthew, brings into the story some guests and some visitors that show up to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Now, according to Matthew, Mary and Joseph are welcoming baby Jesus into their family. They name him Jesus because that's what they're told to name him, which means Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And they apparently then go on and they go home because of the visitors they had came a few years later. Now, you might be thinking about the visitors that Jesus had, or at least the ones we think he had. And according to the Gospel of Luke, it was the shepherds that came and visited him. But in Matthew, it's the visitors are the wise men. The visitors are the three kings, as we like to sing about and talk about. Because they show up because of what they saw in the sky. What did they see in the sky? According to Matthew, it was the star. Now, many of us think that the rest of the story includes the visit of the shepherds and the wise men at the same time, and they all show up to see baby Jesus right when he's born. Well, according to Luke, the shepherds are there. According to Matthew, no one's there. Because what happens with them comes a few years later. And here's how we know that, because of the rest of the story. So what happens is the Magi, or that's what we call them, or the wise men, see the star of Jesus, as according to Matthew, and they see it in the sky and they take it as a sign that something amazing has happened. So they set on a journey to figure out what had happened. And according to their understanding, it was that a new king had been born in Israel and in Jerusalem. And so if you're going to go try to find the new king, you go to the most logical place. You go to the palace and you go try to talk to the king to find out what had happened. Well, they show up to King Herod's palace at the time because he was in charge. He was the king. And they said, we have come to pay respects to this new king that had been born. Now, Herod would have been completely surprised by this because, of course, he knew nothing about Jesus having been born. And so he said to them, well, if there's a new king, I want to know about it. And if there's a new king, I want to pay my respects. So, so when you find him, I want you to report back to me so that I can go and I can show my respect to the new king because clearly that's what I'm supposed to do. Now, Herod was being very underhanded. He was trying to set them up to fail. He was trying to set up so that he could stay in charge. Herod was quite the king and he was quite the manipulator as well. He ruled with an iron fist and we hear a lot about that and he wasn't a good king. And so he sends the Magi, the wise men, on their way, and they find Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus. But guess what? We think of him as baby Jesus, but he was probably two or three years old by the time they would have gotten there. And so they show up and they have an experience of meeting Jesus and they give Mary and Joseph the gift of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And it's because there are three gifts recorded in Matthew that we think there were three kings or three wise men. That's where that whole thing comes from. But we actually are never told how many are there. But they leave and they go home a different way than they came so that Herod wouldn't know what was going on. Well, eventually, Herod figures out that he had been tricked and that they had gone home and there was nothing he could do about it. And so what he assumed was that the new king of the Jews had been born and he didn't know who it was or where it was. And so Herod does this awful thing. He commands that every boy who's three years of age or two years of age or younger is to be executed. So there's no way that he could grow up to be the next king of the Jews. And that's what happens. Now, fortunately, according to Matthew, Joseph is warned about this in in a dream, and he's warned to leave and go to Egypt. 
Now, this is part of what is at the root of trying to help people see Jesus as the next Moses, because Moses was in Egypt as well. And so Mary and Joseph and Jesus flee to go down to live in Egypt for a time, to escape this kind of panic activity by the king. And that's how the story continues. Now, according to what happens next in the text, later on, when after Herod dies, Joseph has another dream when he's warned that it's okay to go back. And so they go back to Israel, but they don't go back to the town where they were from, but they go to live in a town called Nazareth. And that's where Jesus would grow up. Now, I share this with you for a a couple of different reasons. I want you to know, I want all of us to know how the story really goes how to know the rest of the story compares to the one that we have in our heads. Because one of the problems that happens is we imagine this kind of really cute and really fun nativity experience where all these people show up and we have the wise men and the shepherds there. And I'm not saying that you need to go and change your nativity set at home, but I am suggesting that we have a better understanding of what happens according to the text. Because there's more that happens and when we see that, we have a better understanding of what God was up to. Now, the wise men, they came from the east. That means that Jesus was a very special person according to what they thought. And because of that, what we see is that Jesus wasn't going to be a king that impacted just Israel or just that kingdom, but he was going to be a king that impacted the whole world. That's the kind of message that we're supposed to get from the visit of the wise men. And when we see that, we see that God was up to something that was even more amazing than simply saving one kingdom, that God was going to be establishing God's kingdom here on earth so that the whole world could be a place that would come to know God's love and to come to know that God had a plan for them, to come to know eventually that they mattered to God. And that was part of the story that was being told at that time, that God was actually not going to be just with Israel, but that God was going to be with all people for all time. And when we know the rest of the story or when we know a a more robust version of the story, we get a better understanding of what God has been up to and what God wants us to be up to as well. Now, this is the rest of the Christmas story according to the Gospel of Matthew. When this whole thing wraps up and after Jesus and Mary and Joseph get back home from Egypt, it moves forward many years into the time when Jesus was going to be an adult. Now, what we catch here is an understanding, and what we see here is an understanding of who they thought Jesus was, even from his earliest of days. That he was one who was going to change the way people understood how the world was going to be. That he was going to be the king for all people because it was going to be God with one and God with all. And this is a beautiful part of the rest of the story that God gives to us. I hope that by hearing the rest of the story, you can have a better understanding of how amazing it is that Jesus came to do what Jesus would do. Because he had an amazing start to his life. He had some risks, he had some visitors, and because of all that, we understand just how amazing it is that God did what God did for us. So hear the rest of the story and let it guide you to know that God had sent Jesus to be a king for one and a king for all, that he could be Emmanuel, God with us, for an entire world. That's the rest of the Christmas story, and it's a beautiful one. Show.
Let's spend some time in prayer. God, we give you thanks for new beginnings. We give you thanks for a new year to continue to grow into who you are calling us to be. We give you thanks that in Christ we are all a new creation. The beginning of the new year is always a gift because it reminds us of the time that we have, the time that we have had to make a difference. Lord, some of us are desperate for a new beginning. And we pray that you can help us use what we've learned about ourselves in this last year to be more authentic with ourselves and with other people and with you. God, we pray that you would help us walk towards a braver, more secure version of ourselves so that we can be of service to those around us. We pray that you would help us discern what it is that is worth being so resolute about in this new year. We pray that we would have the kind of grace for ourselves and for others that you have shown us. God, help us cling to the promise that we are all always becoming who you are calling us to be. Lord, just as we are not yet who you have called us to be, we know that the world is not yet what you've created it to be. There seems to always be more people and places in the world that need your rescue. We think especially of people who've lost everything in natural disasters and have to start over. We think of people who have had to leave everything behind to escape violence and are now in the long process of resettlement. We think of young people who have been failed by system after system and have no sense of home or belonging. God, we pray that you would use your power and your people to redeem these broken systems and establish your kingdom here on earth, just as Jesus taught us to pray. And so we pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Well, thanks for joining us for our online service today. We hope that our time together helps your faith make a difference for you every day. We do hope that you will find times and opportunities in this season to choose to pursue the joy that God has given to you. It is the reason for the season, and so we hope that all together we can choose to pursue that joy. We also hope that you'll join us again next week for our service. And please know that until we gather again, we are praying for you and are here for you in any way we can be. But until that time, please know that God is with you and we're praying for you.